Hi, Salika here for Peak Survival. Now there might come a time in your winter travels that you'll consider crossing a frozen body of water. There are certain safety precautions you must take and things you need to know about the ice before you do this. Now I've created a small diagram in the snow here, of a, a river. Now, the water flows much quicker on the outside of the river. Um, so this is where the th ice is gonna be its thinnest. This is because the water is very aggressive and um, over in this area, it's much straighter, so it's gonna be a little bit smoother. So you can always cross in this area, but it would be much better if uh, you see a delta. Now this, the water's gonna be a lot more calm and it's a much safer place to cross. However, I must advise you, if you are cr crossing a river, um, and you think it might be deeper than your actual uh, height, if you do crash through that ice, that stream will carry you through. That, it, there's so much force underneath that ice that it's just going to suck you under. So in uh, an ideal situation, if you don't mind just treading through thick ice, I mean thick snow around, uh, do that. But I mean, if, if you have to cross the river, uh, be very, very careful. Um, so let's learn a little bit about ice. So this is just like a little stream going into, into a pond right now, but the water is still moving under there. Now the ice, as you can see, is really thin. So that's what I was talking about, because it's still moving. Now, if we move down over here, where it's a lot more quiet, the ice is much thicker. Now let's observe certain things about the ice. Now you see this area, it's thick, but it's much darker. This means that the ice is much thinner. On the other side, it's white. That means it's much, much thicker. Now, the thickness of the ice will determine uh, how much weight it can support. So below two inches, it's really not safe to cross. Three inches, a cross-country skier can go across it. Four inches, um, you know, a, a fisherman um, boat can kind of go over that. Five inches, snowmobile, six inches, uh, a, a bigger boat, seven inches, a group of six to 10 people, eight inches, one car, nine inches, several snowmobiles, and 10 inches or thicker, uh, different weights of trucks. So um, let's say you um, are crossing water. Uh, it'd be great if you happen to have, I don't know, ice picks on you or even a ski pole or you know a stick kind of probe the ice before you cross it just to see how thick it is. Now let's say in a situation where you're in a wilderness survival situation, you don't have anything on you. I mean, just observe obviously the things I told you about the stream, the running, observe. You can always test it with your feet a little bit and just look at the colors of the ice to help you determine which path you're gonna take. Now, um, another thing to consider is that if you see sticks or rocks sticking out of the ice, um, those areas are going to be a lot thinner too because it's getting uh, exposure from the sun and it's, it's you know, a little bit of melting around that surface. So uh, you want to avoid any areas with sticks, rocks kind of poking out. Um, if uh, there's a lot of trees and mountains casting shadows, the ice is going to be thicker in those areas. So you can follow that path where there's more shadow. And uh, so let's say the worst thing imaginable happens. You are crossing and you hit um, a weak spot in the ice and you fall through. Best thing to do right away, try not to panic. I know it's scary, but right away, do not panic and try to get your arms over that hole. So you want to imagine I'm in the hole right now. So. I'm submerged and I want to get my arms over the hole like this and you want to start kicking. So you're kicking and you're pushing your body out and you're trying to grab onto the, to the snow or whatever ice surface and you're trying to kick and lean, kick and lean until you get out of the water. So that's the best thing you, you can do to get yourself out. You want to do this very quickly because the water is freezing cold and hyperthermia will kick in very soon. So this is just an intro to the subject matter. Uh, if you have any more advice, feel free to leave your comments below. If uh, this has happened to you, feel free to share a story with you, uh, with us rather. And uh, for new subscribers, welcome to Peak Survival. You can check out our website, peaksurvival.us, and feel free to leave some comments.